morning morning abhinithi good morning jina priya very good morning so as i told uh, these are 11 standard portions for neat uh, revision preparation so you'll be sitting along with me for uh, one hour and we'll be quickly seeing the outline of these chapters um, uh, it's not a, a formal you know full discussion on the chapter not detailed discussion but the outline outline and highlights which are important for neat so that's what we are going to cover so within this one hour of span tomorrow also we are going to discuss about animal kingdom so we'll have a, a you know a first outline on biological classification cbsc 11th standard biology second chapter right good morning akshya so this biological classification plant kingdom uh, animal kingdom these are very very important uh, chapters when it comes to the first unit right so why because you will be having uh, examples in it at the same time you will be uh, you will be having uh, uh, you know different concepts that which defines these organisms for example uh, 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 to understand uh, you know where uh, evolution also right sometimes we use this evidences for uh, evolution we have talked right so some of the taxonomic cl classes or arrangement also sometimes it gives a overall picture of the you know uh, organisms be it plant animal or any other so in this biological classification we will be dealing with different types of classification where it started right from uh, you know aristotle so how exactly he started uh, uh, you know classifying the organisms right uh, right from uh, the earliest uh, classification given by aristotle to the uh, we have uh, different types of uh, now classification two kingdom classification three kingdom classification now five five kingdom classification wh whitaker's classification on what basis this five kingdom classification was uh, you know uh, you know uh, made and the conditions etc are very important for true or false in the sense like correct or incorrect statements in the ncr and now uh, neat exam okay so in this chapters wherever you find the charts flow charts or the tables that you need to definitely work on them especially when ncrt biology is concerned right so the wherever the tables are there those tables are very very important and you need to go through them right if there are a uh, lot of examples i gave mnemonics like in strategies like that i'll give mnemonics but as of this uh, kingdoms are concerned they, these are all uh, you know uh, these are all tables that are made based upon the characteristics so you should shouldn't be ignoring these tables okay so with this introduction we'll start we'll start our class i hope everyone is joined or only few members okay fine so today the worksheet i'm going to give would be little in depth will be there at the neat level right so what i'm going to do is i i'm going to release a video on a, a live class will be there on the biological classification brief discussion one hour i will discuss on deep you uh, know briefly about each and every you know most of the important topics and later the third type of video you will be finding detailed discussion on each topic of this lesson so three type of videos this is first and the second is brief discussion one hour and then third one is you will be having detailed discussion so let's learn uh, today what are the important aspects that we can cover in the biological classification right so you shouldn't be taking this uh, lesson uh, you know uh, okay this is a very small lesson and all but the characteristics that uh, those are you know actually on what basis this classifications are made would uh, it has uh, a very significant role okay so here we are talking about classification 
right what exactly this uh, biological class what what exactly a biological classification means so we know already biology means uh, bios you know uh, it's a uh, you know life and logos is knowledge it's a life knowledge uh, you know in this biology what we are doing is we are trying to you know uh, if you understand the term biology right so which were given by you know so the term biology was coined by you know lama right so if you see this in this biology like we have uh, both botany and zoology right so within this we will try to put uh, you know uh, different organisms classification so why do we classify or why do we go for classification we already discussed uh, in last class right so we see this classification of living organisms right why do we classify under this uh, you know this life forms for that matter and what, what are the different types of uh, branches of uh, taxonomy we have so classification or arrangement identification and classification nomenclature right with description we call it as taxonomy right so we have different taxonomy as today i mean in the last class we already discussed about different taxonomies like if you remember numerical taxonomy in cyto uh, you know uh, cyto taxonomy chemo taxonomy right so uh, different types of taxonomies we discussed last class so if you see uh, this uh, classification of living organisms we can differentiate this living organisms classification classification into three types of classification but this was this this is not covered in your ncert but let's see what exactly it means okay so if you see this classification of living organism it can be divided into three three different types of uh, classification one is artificial next one is natural and the third one is phylogenetic so what is actually this uh, artificial means so artificial uh, classification is something uh, a system of classification one or very few characters are considered as a key feature of the classification if you see this classification uh, for example uh, if you see these books uh, if you observe these books you know these are all something related to psychology these are all something related to life and how to get motivated and these are all related to neat biology those are all it means there is a certain criteria i followed in arrangement of the books so the the prime criteria i am considering is you know if i wanted to classify for example if you take a library right or this book stand so on basis of subject we can classify on the basis of author we can classify on the basis of the interest we can classify right so like that in this uh, artificial type of classification we actually uh, use very few characteristics so i used only few characteristics right based upon my interest i just separated that is biology this is psychology this is something motivation that is something uh, uh, general and then that is neat biology so likewise i have just uh, classified these all books what i have uh, here with a five 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 separate things like that a uh, very very general if i go in depth right so if this is something artificial or prior classification so this classification system never throws light on affinities or relations between so there is no relation between this book to this book so my interest all my interested books are here so you can't really relate like that artificial classification uh, follows only certain or very few characteristics are considered for classifying the organisms and then natural classification the second type of classification is a system of classification where the organisms are classified on the basis of their permanent vegetative characteristics so here we are talking about the vegetative characteristics right or oh, how exactly uh, you know uh no what are the different vegetative characters they have based on that they are actually classified okay and then third one is cladistic or phylogenetic classification phylogenetic classification is nothing but the classification of organisms based upon the ancestry right so we will see the deriva uh, derivation of uh, you know how one organism is derived 
for example human has a cladogram or uh, you know uh, or phylogenetic tree you have so how human is connected to brand typicus or roman typicus how we are connected to homo uh, you know uh, homo habilis so there is a ancestral type of classification right <laughs> and then if you see the current uh, current scenario we the widely accepted uh, classification system of classification is five kingdom classification which was given by uh, rh whitaker okay the in that you will be having five kingdoms that is monera protista fungi animalia and plantae so these are the five kingdoms we have so within the kingdom uh, a large taxon you will be having uh, or <coughs> Phylum order and uh, you, uh, you know family. You know you have class, class family, and then you have genus and species. So different tags are arranged. So we have five kingdoms of classification, which was given by R. H. Whitaker. <laughs> so in this uh, chapter, you need to focus on who gave two, two kingdom of classification, who gave three kingdom of classification, who gave Five kingdom of classification. What are the merits and demerits of each classification? You need to focus. They may be asked in correct or incorrect statements. There are chances of three to four percent of questions may come from these lists. So if you see this three kingdom system of classification is uh, was given by Ernest Haeckel, right? Uh, first, eventually uh, classified all organisms into Protista, Animalia, and Plantae. That's it. So uh, there are merits and uh, demerits. Where in this three three kingdom classification, monirans were not uh, you know represented correctly, right? So let's move into the uh, you know the first aspect that is uh, you know uh, so. If you move into the next aspect, that is uh, five kingdom of classification, which is given by you know uh, W. H. Whitaker, and uh, this five kingdoms of classification, right? So these five kingdoms are classified based upon different characteristics. So in this, uh, in N. C. R. T. Uh, they uh, they given uh, you know uh, uh, a table. A table uh, table was given, right? So that table you need to work on. So, for example, uh, the characteristics were placed right based upon the characteristics. For example, you have cell type, cell wall, right, and nuclear membrane based upon the cell. It means whether they are prokaryotic or eukaryotic based upon cell wall, whether the cell wall is present or absent, right, based upon the nuclear membrane present or absent, based upon body organization, whether the body organization is cellular, means a single cell. Or single cell prokaryotes, or single cell eukaryotes, or, or multicellular, what type of organisms? So, and then here, mode of nutrition is very, 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 very important. Okay, mode of nutrition is very important criterion that uh, used uh, uh, by W. H. Whitaker to classify these five kingdoms. So here you need shouldn't be uh, confusing with the mode of nutrition. So. Who shows this heterotrophic nutrition? Who shows this saprophytic in the heterotrophic nutrition, like fungi, right? Holozoic nutrition, where they follow the ingestion, digestion, and you know, assimilation process, right? So you have to know the mode of nutrition. So they may be asking like section column A, column B, and you will be having mode of nutrition, and you will be having five kingdoms, right? So you need to pick. So, uh, for example, monirans, whether they are holozoic or heterozoic or autotrophic or what, what sort of uh, nutrition they follow, that you need to pick, right? So these are the uh, different, uh, you know, characteristics that uh, WHO Taker considered, uh, you know, uh, for classifying organisms into five kingdoms. So moniran, protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. So plantain animalia detailed discussion will be uh, there on the kingdom plantain kingdom animal animalia. So we will be touching only outline in this biological classification. It means we don't touch more examples. But when it comes to monera protista fungi, we will be dealing you know more uh, you know more examples. So should be uh, you know uh, you should be you know practicing those examples as well in this lesson. Okay. 
<coughs> so uh, are you able to follow this are you guys able to follow so this is a very first lesson of your 11th standard you might be forgetting or the or the way you studied might be you may you may not be recollecting exactly what is there but at least if you if you can really relate what we are talking that's that's more than it but later when i provide this outline chapters so this chapter would be very much uh, vastly covered here right so let me know whether you are able to follow or not So I already told if you guys ignore eleven standard portion, it is almost fifty to fifty five percent uh, uh, of your three sixty marks would be covered from eleven standard portions, and this kingdoms or this and especially this classifications are utmost important. They are examples, criterion. So if you ignore these classes, it's uh, it's up to you. So are you able to follow? Please do respond. If you are able to follow, I will move forward. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, is is there any voice problem or something like buffering or what? You guys are taking much time to respond. Okay. Fine. Let's move then. So, first we will be talking about uh, money runs. Right. So when we talk about this five kingdom, five kingdoms of classification, right? Monera, Protista, right? We have Fungi. So you see, this three, that three, the Monera and Protistans and Fungi is what we essentially talk in this lesson. And plant and animal, we will separately deal in a separate chapters: plant kingdom and plant uh, animal kingdom. Whatever board you are, the concepts remain same, but but the content would be little varying. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, deal this uh, Monira. Monira, and, so if you see this Monira and the kingdom Monira, uh, you will see that all prokaryotes such as bacteria, archibacteria, mycoplasmas, actinomyces, cyanobacteria, and rickettsia. So these are the uh, you know groups of uh, organisms are placed uh, within this uh, you know Monirans. Right. So, if you see the characteristics of monirans, right, uh, they are of uh, you know uh, they they have different uh, characteristics. Like again, we have to uh, consider or we have to approach this each kingdom on the basis of that table. For example, what type of cell it is, right? Whether it is prokaryote or eukaryote, right? And then whether uh, whether the next character, what we have to look is whether it has cell wall or not. What is the cell wall composition? Next, what is a uh, whether it has nuclear membrane or not? If it is monirans, obviously nu uh, nuclear membrane will be absent because they are prokaryotes, primitive cell. Body organization, obviously cellular, and the mode of nutrition. Again, you need to. So these are all the five characteristics. Every 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 kingdom we need to look into. Right, then we will have more uh, clarity on. Right, so when we talk about monirans, this uh, if you see this monirans comes uh, under uh, different shapes and uh, you know uh, different uh, you know they can be categorized into different uh, you know categorized into uh, uh, you know different categories based upon their shape as well. <laughs> shape, for example, uh, you have got spherical pockets. We have rod shaped bacillus, we have comma shaped vibrio color of vibrio color. If you see there, it's comma shaped and then spiral spirulum, right? These are these are the uh, bacteria that we are grouping or categorizing based upon, based upon the shapes, right? 
So bacteria comes under different shapes as well. So within this Monera kingdom, Monera, right? These Monerans are abundant in the, uh, you know, uh, on the planet. At the same time, they occur almost everywhere, everywhere, right? So if you if you take the, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, samples of mouth, or you take uh, soil sample or air sample, wherever you take the samples and if you try to see, you will find these Monerans everywhere. And they can be categorized based upon the shape, right? And if you see this, uh, uh, you know, monirans, they will be having very simple uh, structures, right? But they have very complex behavior because they show hemotactic movement as well. Based upon the chemical, they, they would be moving as well, right? And then uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, uh, when we talk about metabolism, right? So they have a wide range of uh, metabolic diversity seen in this uh, microbes especially these uh, monirans so that's what if you if you really connect can connect to the microbes in human welfare we are using different bacteria prokaryotes and the same raw material by using different uh, microorganisms we are able to produce different products how is that possible because they have a diversity more the metabolic pathways are very much diverse it means the same raw material can be acted on those, uh, you know, acted uh, acted by this bacteria, and they can convert eventually convert into different, uh, uh, you know, products by different enzymes. So that's what they have metabolic diversity. Too much of, uh, you know, uh, most extensive metabolic diversity you will be seeing in this monirans. So if you see this monirans, some of them are autotrophic. That's what now we are talking about mode of nutrition, right? So. Uh, you will be finding both autotrophic, right, where uh, they can synthesize their own food from the inorganic substances, right. At the same time, <coughs> they might be, uh, you know, uh, uh, they might be photosynthetic autotrophic or chemosynthetic autotrophic. It means by using sunlight, they can prepare their own food or by using chemicals, they can prepare their own food, right. So the majority of these uh, moderants would be of heterotrophs right usually what uh, in a majority cases what you will find is this monitors actually they cannot really prepare their own food but they actually de uh, depend upon the dead and decaying matter organic matter that's what we see decomposers lot of monitors you will be seeing in the case of decomposers but very few will be finding <coughs> photo uh, photosynthetic autotrophs or sometimes we have uh, chemosynthetic autotrophs, but majority of these monitors would be of heterotrophic in nature, right? Especially this bacteria uh, when the bacteria are concerned. So when we when we classify this uh, monitors, right? So we can get this, you know, uh, classification. I'll be giving in even an outline of the chapter or a worksheet. So this bacteria can be to archibacteria, eubacteria. Archibacteria is very primitive bacteria, very primitive bacteria, and which which lives in very harsh environments, right? So that's what if you see this uh, biogas production methanogens, anaerobes, right? So anaerobes live, living in rumen, that that is one of the harsh uh, environment. At the same time, they can, you can uh, find uh, in. Uh, you know, thermal springs you can find in polar ice caps, you can find this uh, archibacteria in very harsh conditions. Like uh, you may find this, this in uh, high salinity conditions as well, or high temperatures or harsh environments. So likewise, the bacteria can be classified into archibacteria, which is a very primitive one, which lives in a very uh, harsh environments in the in the archibacteria again they, they can be classified into methanogens and halophiles and thermo histophiles right so when it comes to u bacteria u bacteria u u carrier u u means true true bacteria true bacteria can be actually defined divided based upon the their behavior their cell wall at the same time their structure like we have, we have talked right the based upon the shape so, so far what we have discussed is, uh, you know, U bacteria. It means based upon the uh, shape, we can distinguish, uh, we can categorize as uh, caucus, bacilli. It means capsule or rod shape, spirulum, vibrio, comma, shape, 
right based upon the structure based upon based upon the availability of cell wall and the cell wall composition peptidoglycan right we can actually differentiate this bacteria u bacteria into gram positive and gram negative right at the same time on the basis of nutrition this u bacteria can be actually divided into autotrophic and heterotrophic in uh, mode of you know heterotrophic u uh, bacteria yeah right so this is about uh, you know the, uh, the classification right so when i talk about uh, e e individual uh, aspects like archibacteria just now i told right so this archibacteria again can be divided based upon where exactly these uh, type of uh, organisms are present and you see this these archibacteria are very primitive so that was given only uh, very few details were given right so those for example thermoacidophiles belongs to which uh, you know uh, which type of bacteria whether they are belongs to u bacteria or archibacteria so these are the uh, things that you shouldn't be missing or shouldn't uh, do any mistake in and when it comes to u bacteria just now i told right uh, they can uh, few are auto autotrophic uh, photosynthetic autotrophs or few are chemosynthetic autotrophs so based upon the nutrition they can be autotrophs or heterotrophic bacteria right so this is uh, uh, this is uh, about you know uh, in a mode of nutrition in the bacteria right and then we can group them into photosynthetic bacteria and, and heterotrophic bacteria so likewise i gave different examples in the worksheet so you should be going to these are self explanatory but more in detail i will discuss in the next type of videos and then here we can actually see even respiration in bacteria so how do they respire and uh, if you see this respiration again the glucose or lactose or different uh, organic compounds will be broken down to release energy and reproduction if you see again they would be they can actually reproduce asexually or sexual mode of uh, methods and in asexual methods we have different types of uh, modes of uh, asexual methods like fish binary fission or budding or spore formation in sexual methods you have transformation or uh, conjugation it means two based upon if you if you remember the bacterial structure it will have external appendages like flagella and even pili the pili or pili would act would, would actually connect two bacteria and the exchange of genetic material takes place right transduction conjugation transformation or different sexual mode of uh, uh, sexual mode of reproduction observed in this kingdom right economic importance you already we already dealt with this right right so this is this is about the uh, you know uh, uh, first kingdom that is monera right so in this monera it's like the mycoplasms or organisms that actually uh, which which even can survive without oxygen right so they are very minute organisms right but these mycoplasms mycoplasmas are all always pathogenic to human so here we need to even understand that this monirans are not all pathogenic pure pure beneficial as well right but when it comes to mycoplasma they are always pathogenic in uh, for animals and plants so that is it for, for uh, you know uh, kingdom monira so when we talk about kingdom protista so uh, is it clear guys are you able to follow this uh, kingdom Uh, monera so we are just you, uh, you know we are all together studying we are just having a quick outline of the center chapter so please uh, have it have that in mind this is not not an explanatory uh, class uh, session so it is just quick outline at the same time important points are highlighted okay let's move to the next aspect that is uh, kingdom <coughs> protist right so protista when uh, when i talk about the protistans like they are uh, single cell eukaryotic cells right single cell eukaryotic cells are placed under protista right so when we uh, when we talk about this protista right so when we talk about monera there is a strict uh, boundary for the monerans so they don't have cell wall they don't uh, no uh, they don't have nuclear membrane right 
and unicellular organisms nutrition is different right parasitic in pathogenic in nature so there is a strict boundary when it comes to monirans but when it comes to protista that well defined uh, boundaries are not placed in this protista so it might this might be one of the demerit right <laughs> right within this protista we have further uh, class classification is there right uh, i will be giving flow charts for this uh, protista members also right uh, one more thing guys like i am going to release one uh, you know uh, flow chart things right uh, that will be useful for you also it will take some time okay so let's move on to the protista when the protista are actually again classified they classified you know uh, Uh, into photosynthetic plant-like protists and fungi-like protists. It means slime molds and animal-like protists. Protozoans, for example, malarial parasites, amoeba. You know, based upon the movements and based upon cell structure, etc., we can uh, actually uh, categorize. You know, based upon uh, typical nutrition, also we can actually categorize into plant-like, slime mold, fungi-like, and animal-like protists. So within this plant, like we have got uh, pyrophyta, chrysophyta, you no, know, or chrysophyta or you do know phyta. So these are all each and sub subdivisions of this protista. You should be focusing with the example and their characteristics. Pyro, uh, no, pyrophyta, for example, dinoflagellates are example. So where exact dia dia dinoflagellates diatoms. Euglenoids. So, where exactly they are present, and uh, what what is the role in the ecosystem or environment they play? So, those are the things you need to focus on, right? And then animal like uh, protistans. When we talk about animal like pro protistans, we have got amoeboid uh, protozoans, flagellated protozoans, sporozoans, and ciliated protozoans, right? So, in NCERT, actually, they cover they cover uh, chrysophytes, and their characteristics were uh, covered. And in this, diatoms and diatomaceous earth uh, are uh, very much important. And dinoflagellates, dinoflagellates, and their characteristics, right? What are how they appear, right? Where they present, where where exactly they present, where they are, whether they are in air or aquatic. They are aquatic and mostly marine and photosynthetic. So these characteristics are very important. And examples as well. When we talk about euglenoids, right? Euglenoid, why? Uh, no, <laughs> what is the uh, important characteristic of euglenoid is that the the habitat, if you see that of euglenoid, it's a freshwater organism, right? Uh, which you find in stagnant waters. You take samples, and you can even find this euglenoid, right? So uh, examples of this euglenoids is euglena, right? <laughs> right what is a mode of nutrition also you need to cover right so euglenoids chrysophytes dinoflagellates right and their characteristics their mode of nutrition their habitats examples when come to slime molds the slime molds are of saprophytic protists you know i told now fungal like uh, protists these are the saprophytic protists so these are slime molds of saprophytic protists where the body moves along the decaying twigs and leaves engulfing organic material it means they they would be actually engulfing this organic material dead and dead organic you know uh, dead leaves or uh, twigs which they engulf this organic material so you need to understand uh, uh, you know uh, uh, what is the type of nutrition what are the examples of of this uh, uh, protein you know fungi like protists right so for example fungi like protists you will be having like uh, uh, for example um, physarium so uh, physarium i'll be typing here physarium physarium is slime mold so this example was not given in your uh, ncert that's why i'm typing here so try to try to take, take note of it <clears throat> fungi like protists or slime molds example physarium okay this is the example then 
so now comes the uh, animal uh, type of uh, you know uh, no animal type of uh, protists those are protozoans right uh, amoeboid in this protozoans we are uh, very well known uh, you know very well versed or very familiar with this uh, class you know sub uh, sub uh, subclass you know uh, this group of organisms like this protozoans mode of nutrition we know that is heterotrophs right they would be predators or parasites for example malarial parasite Uh, and uh, amoebiasis you take uh, within this uh, animal like protist like uh, protozoans you will be having different types like amoebaic protozoans flagellated protozoans and ciliated protozoans and even sporozoans so based uh, what are this flagellated protozoans and their characters and their examples and ciliated protozoans and uh, what is the typical characters of characteristic of the Uh, ciliated protozoan in the name itself the cilia is there right so these protozoans are ciliated so what is a typical example paramecium slipper uh, slipper animal cule so these are this is how you need to remember or you need to make connections and then sporozoan and we have got plasmodium vivax or plasmodium malaria parasites comes under this sporozoans which co- which actually forms the spores right they have a uh, different type of uh, mode of uh, reproduction so these examples were already covered in this lesson so when comes to the next aspect is fungi there is kingdom fungi right so if you see this fungi again what is the type of uh, what is the type of cell whether prokaryotic or eukaryotic eukaryotic there is unicellular multicellular multicellular what type of nutrition autotrophic or heterotrophic heterotrophic uh, organisms so these are the uh, features that you need to uh, study or recollect whenever you start a new kingdom so what are the basic features we can see in the fungi so fungi lack chlorophyll hence they are heterotrophic so they don't have uh, chlorophyll so the obviously they have to depend upon the other organisms for the food and even they show the nutrition type is saprophytic in nature it means they depend upon uh, grow on dead and decaying matter wood or some organic matter so uh, for example you take mushroom etc right <laughs> so what are the uh, food reserves so food reserves are glycogen just like uh, we have uh, you know glycogen or oil when comes to the food reserves right so is it clear so this is uh, if you see this uh, fungal classification again the fungi can actually classify into two sub classes right one is uh, myxomycetes and eumycetes so myxomycetes or uh, or certain type of fungi which the body is amoeboid and they have naked protoplasts so the protoplast is just exposed in the sense there is no strict uh, you know you know compartmentalization so myxomycetes and further within this uh, kingdom fungi right so they have given uh, different uh, uh, sub subdivisions right so you know it is further classified right so so far what we have discussing is their mode of nutrition and uh, uh, what type of uh, you know type of nutrition and what uh, whether they are unicellular or multicellular etc we discuss so when we talk about uh, uh, you know uh mode of nutrition right so this 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 fungi uh, can actually produce the uh, you know uh, you know spores right uh, if you see this the it can act, uh, this this can actually uh, reproduce by sexual and asexual modes if you see the sexual cycle sexual sexual type cycle in this fungi you can uh, they will follow three important steps one is plasmogy plasmogamy karyogamy and then finally the meiosis in the zygote which results in haploid spores so this is how spore formation would be taking place so these three steps are important plasmogamy is something is a fusion of you know protoplasts between motile and non motile gametes either they can be motile gametes or non motile gametes so these two gametes protoplasms would be fused after fusion of protoplasm karyogamy it means nucleus would be fused once the nucleus is fused then they undergo this meiosis occurs in zygote which results in haploid spore cell so this is is a very it's a different type of uh, mode of uh, reproductive uh, cycle that occurs especially in this fungi okay 
So within this, we find uh, you know su subdivision again. The function divided into you know u mysis. Within this u mysis, one is mixomysis, another is u mysis. U mysis or unicellular, multicellular or filamentous. They can be unicellular, they can be multicellular, or even they are filamentous. So within the u mysis, we have phycomysis, ascomysis, duodenomysis, basidiomysis. So there are four different uh, categories present in the u mysis, and each category you need to remember what are its mode of nutrition, uh, where the what are the habitats, right, and uh, uh, what what type of reproduction takes place, asexual, asexual, spore formation is there, there or not, which type of spore formation is there, right. So and examples. So see, these are the aspects you need to cover in each subdivision of this fungi. Like phycomysis or mycelium, uh, uh, you know, if you see this mycelium, right? This uh, fungus would grow this mycelium or hyphae. So this mycelium could be, it can be uh, septate, which can form separate, you know, separate room-like structures or a septate. So likewise, you need to know for each for all these four types of, uh, you know, four different categories. Those are phycomysis. Ascomysis, Deuteromysis, uh, and Basidiomysis. Should be knowing either mycelium is septate or septate or septate. Whether they have uh, what type of uh, nutrition, what type of reproduction they occur. So they will be we will be seeing and examples. So these are the four aspects you need to cover in each each time, right? So if you see the micro uh, phycomysis, you will find the mycelium. Uh, is uh, can be accepted and uh, it is accepted and uh, multi nucleate condition will be seen. Ascomysis, you will find mycelium is septate. Deuteromysis, you will be finding mycelium is septate. And mysteriomysis, even the mycelium is septate. So, I have given in worksheet different examples and at the same time different mode of nutrition that you will see in this uh, fungi also. So, please you need to carefully study this. And again, I told right the basic uh, reproduction uh, in fungi. If you consider, it can be of asexual, sexual, or vegetative type. So, vegetative type of re, uh, you know vegetative type of uh, reproduction involves fragmentation, budding, fission, uh, or uh, you know rhizophorus. It means these are the uh, different types of vegetative property. Uh, vegetative type of mode of reproduction can be observed in the fungi. Right. So, where in this vegetative type of reproduction, where uh, when a vegetative structure after separation produces a new individual, for example, uh, uh, assume that I am a uh, fungi, right? And if my, my hand is fallen off, so that hand would become a, the other bouncy. So, likewise, this fragmentation, budding, fission, these are all examples of vegetative type of reproduction in this fungi. And asexual type of uh, reproduction, we have uh, spore form, juice spore formation, right? Uh, we have uh, conidia formation, right? Uh, spore formation would be taking place in this case of uh, asexual uh, uh, no, type of uh, reproduction. And then there is a sexual type of uh, reproduction also, where the fusion of uh, nuclei takes place. I told now uh, three different steps right plasmogamy and plasmogamy karyogamy and then finally meiosis in the zygote so when we talk about the life cycles of uh, fungi right these life cycles uh, uh, of uh, fungi can be of sexual and asexual right so how this uh, one follows the other after the sex asexual reproduction and then sexual reproduction so there is uh, alternate alternate alternation of life cycle also will be taking place so that you need to once focus on this, right? So that is it uh, for this fungi when we when we talk about the fungi. So these are the aspects you need to cover. So when we talk about plant day, I told right. So in plant day, uh, plant day in which uh, multicellular mostly the plant day includes all eukaryotic chlorophyll containing organisms. So mostly we, we separated, we kept all organisms which has this chlorophyll, right? They will be placed in the plant area, right? They are mostly of multicellular, 
right? Even the exceptions are there in these plants. Uh, we have exceptions like insectivorous, right? Venus flytrap, where they actually uh, depend upon uh, insects uh, for their nutrition, right? Or some sometimes they are mostly of parasitic, right? So again, this plantae and then animalia. When we talk about this animalia and plantae, we will take up these two units of this in more depth. Uh, more uh, more depth in uh, chapter you know this uh, chapter eight you know this uh, plant kingdom and animal kingdom and i deal with these two chapters separately the entire aspects of uh, kingdom plant and animal that can be covered okay so as of now uh, these are the things you need to cover in this biological classification where when we talk about uh, you know viruses or virioids or lichens we have a separate uh, uh, these guys are not mentioned in the five uh, five kingdom classification of the data because they are acellular or acellular uh, particle like structures or sometimes organisms, right? And even if you see the lichens, they are associations, right? So they are uh, they are mutual uh, they are mutually uh, uh, associated. So one organism is dependent upon other organism. You take one of the organism, the other organism is uh, will not be surviving. So that's why we, we didn't actually, uh, uh, the Vitaker didn't classify these uh, viro uh, viruses, viroids, and uh, you know, lichens within the uh, five kingdom classification. When it comes to these viruses, you know, now you got uh, enough uh, information about the viruses, right? So they have uh, genetic material and their mode of, uh, you know, entry points at the same time, uh, transmission at the same time, how they affect, we have already. Uh, discussed in human health, health and disease. So those things you need to just cover. It's a self-explanatory. Uh, when it comes to uh, lichens, you need to once uh, focus on what are phycobiont and mycobionts, right? And their examples you need to focus. That's it, right? So yeah, even uh, uh, even there is a chance that who introduced or who actually discovered these what virioids, right? So. And what is the genetic material? Whether they have, what exactly they are, uh, why they are very much, uh, where, why they are separate? Uh, what is the difference between virioids and viruses? Right. So viruses, if you see, they have protein code, but in virioids, you will not have. So these are the aspects that you need to cover in this lesson. I hope this lesson uh, uh, is clear. Right. So did you follow, guys? Now we'll start. Uh, now we'll start kingdom uh, animalia, right? So tomorrow, we, tomorrow also we I kept animalia. So today I will introduce. I will will see few important highlights of uh, what made what are the important aspects in animalia, and then we quickly tomorrow we'll complete the animalia. We we'll start with animalia. Tomorrow same time, and then we will uh, we will uh, we will uh, we will try to take up the next uh, 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 what is this uh, next next uh, chapter in botany that is plant kingdom. So within this cumulative before cumulative six test itself, all the classifications are completing. So that's how I scheduled. So plant kingdom would be completed, animal kingdom would be completed, and biological classification would be completed. So at one single thought, you will be completing entire classifications. So please make use of time and plan. Uh, follow the plan. So plan was not just randomly given based upon the importance, weightage, and the way we have to you know approach the topics. Also, I gave uh, the neat plan. So please do follow that. Whoever doesn't have the plan, please do ask me. Okay. Now let's move to the next uh, uh, now lesson that is uh, kingdom animalia. So now you know that what on what basis classification, what are the types of classification, on what basis uh, the classification will be made, and what are the different types of classification exist, and what is the present classification we are following, right? Within that present classification, five kingdoms of uh, classification, we are now we are talking about kingdom. Animalia. So when you talk about animalia, right? We see, we do see, uh, you know, uh, different characteristics like levels of organization. It means uh, uh, there was uh, one important table uh, uh, was given 
you know two different uh, one one important table and one figure was given actually in the NCERT textbook that needs to be uh, carefully understood. So this entire kingdom uh, animalia can be actually classified based upon level of organization, whether they are cellular level or tissue level or organ level. So number of cells, and then we can go with the symmetry, right? So symmetry, whether uh, we have got different types of symmetry, right? So whether they are bilateral, radial, or asymmetric, based upon that also we can classify. We are what we are doing is we are actually grouping the entire animalia or enter uh, you know all uh, the organisms which which satisfy to be kept in kingdom animalia so will the general characteristics that animalia possess or should possess what are the different characteristics actually uh, that uh, kingdom animalia should process is nothing but they should display this heterotrophic and they should be eukaryotic organism multicellular and uh, they should lack cell wall Right, so these are all type of organisms are placed in the kingdom animalia, and if you see that based upon the cellular organization, the work is divided. The division of labor will be seen in this animalia planting. Right. So uh, apart from that, you need to uh, we have this we we actually classified based upon even body cavity. So we have a body cavity where the organs are placed in a perfect places. Right. So body cavity or coelom. So based upon the coelom, we will be classifying them as acelomates, pseudocelomates, and coelomates, eucelomates. So whether they lack the body cavity, whether they have a false body cavity, or partially formed, or true, having a perfect uh, body cavity, or coelom will be talking. So within the coelom, we will have coelomic fluid, and then uh, based upon this. Uh, three different aspects that is level of organization, symmetry, and body cavity or zero will be classifying this entire having different phyla. So, if you see right from the you know primitive uh, uh, multicellular lower multi lower vertebrates, actually, we can call them as even lower vertebrates and higher vertebrates, multicellular lower vertebrates, right from the coriferans to chordate members to the vertebrate members. We have separate classification. So each phylums here, that's what I told, right? Kingdom, uh, when it comes to animal classification, we use phylum, but in the case of plant classification, we use division. So tomorrow we'll be discussing about uh, you know phylum porifera, we'll be discussing about uh, you know <coughs> We will be discussing about nidaria or uh, cylindrata, so based upon the body structures, right? Or tenophora, platea elementis, nematia elementis, right? Ascia elementis, any leader. So, all this, uh, you know, uh, phylum should be discussed tomorrow. So, I hope you understood uh, today's class. So, so uh, in, uh, in a more uh, the brief discussion on this. Biological classification would be released uh, or would be taken up uh, uh, today uh, to, to do pre So we can have it, and especially the content would be varying, and I will give a, a much more brief uh, explanation. So I hope you guys followed, and uh, tomorrow we'll continue with the animal phylums. So if we start animal phylums right now, we'll be starting with the poriferan members. What are the different characteristics we'll see in the poriferan? So, uh, to, from tomorrow we can uh, start. Okay, so make use of these lessons and these uh, three type of uh, classes that I am taking. So whenever you are interested, you can go back and you can see. That's what I'm doing. Doing these YouTube live sessions so that you can access at any point of time, n number of times. So it's just I'm sitting with you guys and I'm we are revising together. So think in that way and uh, make use of this uh, videos as well. Okay, so please do share with your metric friends and other uh, CBSC friends who missed this class. And please do consider subscribing and uh, like before you leave. So tomorrow we'll meet with the uh, plant kingdom as well as animal kingdom. We'll start with animal kingdom. If you if you uh, if you guys have any doubts, you can ask me right now.
okay then uh, we'll meet you tomorrow see you tomorrow and uh, stay at home stay safe and uh, take care thank you